If Tesla was to ever have their currently undisputed title of the best and biggest electric car manufacturer in the world taken away from them, it is probably going to be by the Volkswagen Group and the solid-state technology that is being developed by a California-based company, QuantumScapes. I will explain how it may happen and talk to the QuantumScape CEO, Jagdeep Singh, and we're going to start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to say thank you so much for everybody who sent me well wishes. As you probably know, I haven't been making videos for about two weeks because I lost my voice. And today is literally the first day when doctors told me I can finally talk. So, thank you so much. It will probably take a few more weeks for my voice to fully come back with some speech therapy. So for now, you're stuck with the sexy version of it. Now, Tesla has been the undisputed king of electric car manufacturing for a decade. But there is competition now, and its biggest rival at this point, if you ask me, is the Volkswagen Group that sold almost half a million electric cars last year and has more EV models out there than even Tesla. However, in the EV game, it's all about the batteries, the most important part of any EV. And Tesla is still winning with their 4680 battery tech that they have recently unveiled. But the holy grail of the EV battery technology is the solid state battery, which Tesla does not appear to be even developing at this point. Yet many others are, and the consensus right now is that the company that is leading the way is San Jose, California-based QuantumScape. Yes, they may just have the better battery tech than Tesla in the making. But guess who happened to be its biggest shareholder? That's right, the Volkswagen Group. And if the Volkswagen Group can get this technology into the market before Tesla does, and there are many indicators that they will, well, this can change everything. So I drove all the way to San Jose, California in my Volkswagen ID4 to sit down for an exclusive interview with QuantumScape's founder and the CEO, Jagdeep Singh. But before we get to our conversation, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by our new sponsor, VinFast. The deliveries of two electric vehicles, the VF8 and VF9, arrive later this year. Find out more about all the benefits you'll receive when you reserve your VinFast TV today using the link in the description of this video. You know, I wanted to start with Tell my audience what this, what, what it is that you guys are doing and how it's actually going to affect them when your technology is in their cars on their driveways and compare it to what they get right now with uh, just regular lithium ion batteries. Absolutely. So first of all, great to have you here. Thank you. Um, so the holy grail of batteries has been to find a battery that uh, drives longer on a single charge, that can recharge more quickly, uh, that is safer. Uh, ideally, it also costs less and has a longer life in terms of number of cycles. Um, now, lithium-ion has done a great job uh, over the last 30 years, but it's been a very slow evolution in energy density. It's only gone up by about 3, 4, 5 percent per year over the last 30 plus years. Um, the, the biggest opportunity to increase the energy density of the lithium-ion battery is to replace the carbon-based anode, carbon or silicon-based anode, with an anode made of pure metallic lithium because uh, lithium is much more energy dense than carbon or, or silicon. Um, the problem is lithium metal doesn't work with today's liquid electrolytes. If you recall, today's batteries consist of a cathode, an anode, a separator, and a liquid electrolyte through which lithium ions move. Um, th that liquid reacts with the lithium metal, so you can't use it with, uh, with liquids today. Uh, and people have tried for 30 years to find a way to make lithium metal work uh, unsuccessfully. What you need is a solid state separator, which can allow lithium ions to move through it like they would through a liquid, but that prevent lithium metal dendrites, which are needle-like crystals of lithium, from penetrating that separator. Uh, people looked at many different kinds of materials over the last you know, 30, 40 years, from sulfides to uh, polymers to oxides. Uh, none of them successfully prevent dendrites. Uh, that's the problem that we've uh, been focused on addressing. That's the problem that we've now shown we have data indicating cells can actually cycle with lithium metal and these solid separators. Now, once you do that, you unlock all the benefits that I, that I spoke about. You get energy density that's on the order of 50% greater than today's batteries. So that's like 10 years worth of improvement in lithium-ion uh, lithium uh, world. 
uh, batteries that can charge more quickly because you don't have the, the bottleneck to diffusion that you see in a normal carbon anode. Uh, batteries that actually may cost less because you get rid of the anode. In our design, there is no anode. The, the lithium metal in our anode comes from the cathode itself. When we buy the cathode, it has lithium in it, and that's what forms the anode. Uh, and it can be safer because this solid state separator that we use is non-combustible, unlike the polymers uh, that are used in today's batteries. So in one fell swoop, you can get a battery that addresses all the problems. So to come back to your original question, what, do, what does it mean for uh, your viewers uh, in terms of having a car in their driveway that is made with lithium metal solid state batteries? They get cars that uh, go further on a single charge, that can recharge more quickly, uh, that are safer, uh, that can be lower cost, and that might live even longer than conventional batteries. Those are all really desirable things. And just to understand, solid state batteries is a whole, whole, holy grail of electric car batteries. Mm -hmm. That That's our goal once mm -hmm. we get there. Essentially, there's nothing mm -hmm. more that we can do with energy. Is that, is that correct? Well, I mean, uh, there's ongoing improvements you can get, but the biggest uh, step function jump that we're aware of is to replace the anode with lithium, uh, uh, replace the carbon or silicon anode with lithium metal. Uh, once you get that, there are other improvements that are doable. For example, we have a lot of patents on uh, a cathode chemistry known as the metal fluoride chemistries, uh, which have a lot more uh, energy density than conventional cathodes. Uh, so you will see the ability to get increasing energy over time, but the step function jump really happens now with this uh, switch to solid state, and more importantly, lithium metal anode. This is a key point that your viewers may not be aware of. Solid state sounds kind of cool, because it's, you know, why it would solid state, cool. you know, it's like, you know, solid state electronics is better than, you know, vacuum state electronics. However, solid state by itself is simply an enabler. What really gives you the bang for the buck in terms of all the benefits we spoke about is that lithium metal anode. So the reason why solid state is important is because it allows you to use lithium metal. Lithium metal is what gives you the energy density and the fast charge. So would you say that right now you guys are the industry leader as far as most likely first to market, most likely with a better product as far as solid state is concerned for cars? In our view, the answer to that is absolutely. And we say that uh, you know, uh, with a very simple set of criteria, which is, has anybody else shown a solid state or lithium metal cell that can meet what we consider to be the basic requirements of working in a car. And basic requirements to us are, can you get 800 cycles, that's about a couple hundred thousand miles of range, at, at a, a high rate of charge, 1C, 1C, which means a one hour charge rate, because that, that's the minimum bar you gotta hit, we believe, uh, running at room temperature, like 25 degrees, not elevated to, 45, to 60 or 70 or degrees Celsius. Um, uh, and to our knowledge, we're the only uh, next-gen battery company that has published data showing uh, cells that can do that. So, um, so uh, the answer question in our view is objectively yes, uh, until someone else shows that data, there's no one else that we believe uh, can, you know, is there. What do you think about Toyota claiming that they've had one for a year uh, testing the solid-state battery actual car? Yeah, so Toyota has never published any data on their batteries. Um, uh, and you know, more importantly, Toyota, the, all the work that they've done over the years has, uh, has been on the sulfide system. And the challenge with sulfides is uh, that, um, uh, that they don't prevent dendrites. Uh, so, and Toyota's not the only one. Many of the players, Samsung, and uh, there's some startups uh, in, in this country that are based on sulfides as well. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to make a solid state or lithium metal system work with a, a separator that doesn't prevent dendrites would be like trying to make a raincoat out of a fabric that doesn't hold water, right? It's not gonna keep you dry in the end of the day. So, um, you know, it's kind of, if, if you're trying to make a raincoat out of cotton, like, or, or this fabric that I have on right now, uh, it doesn't matter how I fashion the garment, it just won't keep me dry. I have to start with a fabric that's watertight. But, uh, okay, so let's talk about, you know, a few other technologies that are on the market right now, right? Tesla kind of uh, really been flaunting the 4680s. Um, you know, you've talked to Sandy as well, mm -hmm. as I have, and um, it's obviously sort of, sort of in a, a middle step. Right, it's we're not there with forty six eighties. What are your thoughts on, on on that? Is it a good step? Because you know, like um, Peter Rolls and the the CEO of Lucid mm -hmm. said, that well, it's just fancy packaging. What are your thoughts on forty six eighties? Is it a pretty decent step to you know forward right now, or it's still kind of in the same ballpark? And uh, why isn't Tesla, for example? Um, trying to get to the solid state battery. Is there, is, 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 there, is there a business model that will survive in the next five years or so if you're an auto manufacturer? 
without the solid state? Well, so the 4680 is a, a new package. It's a little bit bigger, as you know, from, than the 2170 that they used today or the 1850 that they used to use. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's still lithium ion technology. And they've in, incorporated a number of key improvements, at least the ones they've publicly spoken about, that all make a lot of sense, right? They're going to, you know, even higher nickel content in the cathode. They're going to, you know, they're trying to wait, find a way to do a, a, a dry electro deposition. Uh, they're, uh, you know, looking at, you know, ways to, uh, you know, uh, 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 do what they call a tabless design, which makes it, you know, provides better uh, uh, rejection of heat, for example. Those are all things that make total sense. Um, but those are all techniques, or all those are all things that also apply to what we're doing. Uh, so, but in addition to all those things, uh, so we can use a high nickel cathode, we can you know, work with dry after processing. In addition to that, the key differentiator for what we're doing is that we don't have the anode. When we make our cell, it's made anode free. This is a key point, right? The conventional cells are made with three layers. There's a cathode layer, uh, an anode layer, and the middle is a separator. In our cell, there's only two layers. There's a cathode layer and a separator layer because there's zero anode. The anode is formed in situ from the lithium that's already in the cathode that's cycling up and down. The normal cell that lithium is cycling is, is um, hosted by the carbon or silicon anode. So it takes uh, six carbon atoms to hold one lithium atom. Uh, and what we do is we do away with that carbon. That's what shrinks the volume down and gives you a benefit. So we think we can um, apply all those benefits and, um, uh, and, 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 and then uh, uh, improve it further by uh, replacing the carbon or silicon anode with a lithium metal anode. Um, and frankly, we, we believe that, you know, um, uh, you know uh, every car company uh, is going to be interested in it. Uh, it's just that we don't have these cells yet. We're still working on industrializing them. So until we get it to market, um, you know, uh, we, you know we're, we're just, we need to focus on, on, on getting it done. Right? All right. So, um, I mean, obviously, if this is the ho holy grail of batteries, um, are there other manufacturers besides Volkswagen Group, obviously, as, as investors that are interested in this? Why, are, why isn't there a line out of the door? And if so, have you talked to others? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, as you point out, if you have a battery that is uh, that has better energy density and faster charge and uh, better safety characteristics, maybe lower cost, better life, uh, everybody is interested in it. So at this point, we're really more constrained by demand than by um, excuse me, we're more constrained by supply than by demand. Uh, meaning that um, uh, that you know uh, 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 th there's just a lot more interest from the automotive OEMs than we have capacity to fulfill. Having said that. Uh, we did announce uh, just earlier this quarter a second top 10 OEM uh, that we announced a partnership with. So we now have two of the world's top 10 uh, automotive OEMs that, that are uh, 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 going to be working with us. Um, and um, you know, uh, we've said in the past that you know, one of the goals that we have for our uh, QS0 pre-pilot line is to be able to make enough cells uh, to actually enable some of the other players out there uh, to work with us. Um, Volkswagen's been a great partner, uh, but it's not an exclusive partnership. So uh, uh, we are allowed to work with other OEMs, and, and we are doing that now. Um, but they do have the right to be first. So the first cars on the road will be a VW-branded uh, uh, vehicle, whether it's, uh, well, a VW uh, Group vehicle, whether it's the VW brand or Porsche or Audi, uh, one of those um, uh, uh, VW Group brands. Uh, but uh, as you might imagine, there, the demand for this uh, uh, goes beyond any one uh, car comes with. So again, maybe just to dumb it up for me, uh, let's say if we're targeting, you know, 2025, mm -hmm. having a Volkswagen Group mm -hmm. car uh, with, let's say, a 100 kilowatt hour battery, mm -hmm. um, what would be a target, I know you don't want to give specifics, but a target range and a, a charge time from zero to 100 on a car like that with a 100 kilowatt hour yeah, battery? Yeah, so I mean, we have provided estimates on that. I mean, I think we're, we're targeting 1,000 watt hours per liter, right? Uh, and so if you have the same amount of volume that's available in, say, uh, a Tesla uh, that gets a Tesla, think of it this way. Today's um, Model 3 uses a battery that's on the order of 715 watt hours per liter, to the best of our knowledge. Um, uh, and uh, they might have on the order of, I don't know, 300-ish liters of space. I'm just, uh, this is just a ballpark estimate. Uh, don't quote me on the precise number. Uh, but if you... Uh, if you take if you take a you know um, the 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 same volume of battery with 50% greater energy density, like it's 50% greater range. So a 300 mile range car becomes a 450 mile range car. Right on the charge front, uh, instead of charging from zero to 80% uh, in uh, in uh, uh, you know uh, something like 40 minutes, about an hour to full charge, 
uh, we believe we can uh, charge to 80% in on the order of 15 minutes. Right? So it's a lot better than what you can do today. Uh, still not as fast as a gasoline-powered car, so there's more work to be done. Uh, but uh, it starts to become, you know, uh, in the realm of, of uh, uh, you know, of, of reasonable. Right? Yeah. Um, so here you drive an electric car as well. I do. Yeah. What do you drive? Well, uh, I I have both, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Tesla and a, a, a Porsche Taycan. Oh. And so which I Tesla? To, uh, I have an S and an X, and I have the Taycan. So they're all good cars. Do tell. <laughs> which one is your favorite? <laughs> you know, I, I, I obviously, which uh, one of your kids? Uh, is obviously, your need to be diplomatic here. Yeah. Uh, they're they're both great cars, and and uh, I think more importantly, I think what's was clear is that uh, these cars are better than combustion cars. Either one of them is, you know, um, uh, uh, I don't know if you drive an electric car or not, but uh, when I I, I have to, I even first, if I yeah. didn't want to, but well, I do. Yeah. Well, well, when I first switched to electric cars. It's a Volkswagen um, 2 by the way. Perfect. Uh, ID4 maybe? Yes. Or, okay, yes. awesome. Well, that, that, Charging over there. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I think um, you know the, the key difference I noticed when I switched electric, which was with the first Roadster. I, the, this company started because I was driving a Roadster to work every day at my, at my previous company. Yeah. And, I, and I realized in many ways it was a great car. It could be the future of cars. It was fast and it was green. But it had a lot of problems that were all traceable back to the battery. So I got obsessed with trying to build a better battery yeah, yeah. and to the point where I quit my job and you know, I got involved with the venture capital fund to start this company. That's an interesting story in itself. So what triggered you is how unimpressed you were with the original well, no, Tesla. Well, I was impressed enough to think it was the future of cars, yeah. but it, clearly the battery had a lot of challenges that needed to get, yeah. needed to get addressed. Yeah. Out of everybody who avoided this question, you have avoided <laughs> it in the most entertaining way. So I appreciate that. The future of electric cars is definitely getting very interesting and I am so happy that I'm in for the ride. All right, don't forget to tune in into my weekly live chat, our subscriber hangout that's coming back now that I have my voice every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged.